Hi, we are at Pone to Own Tokyo 2019 here at the St. Grace Cathedral in Shibuya. We are hacking IoT things, we are hacking mobile things. You might be wondering what it looks like inside. Let's go. And here we go. This is where the magic happens. Show me what you got. Back, back, back up, back, back, back up. Got, got, got. Back, back. All of our attempts take place up here. We have an RF enclosure so that anything we do doesn't interfere with anyone else and what they are doing in there can't be interfered with. We are about to see an attempt against a TV, which is a first this year at Pondo in Tokyo. They are setting up now. Let's see what's gonna happen. Our day began with the fluoroassay duo of Amat Kama and Richard Zhu targeting the Sony X800G television. This was the first attempt against a television in Pondo in history. But it took no time for the Pondo and veterans to get a bind shell due to a JavaScript out of bounds read in the embedded web browser. Their first successful exploit of the contest earned them $15,000 and two points towards Master of Home. Next up, Pondo newcomers Pedro Ribeiro and Radek Domainski of Team Flashback targeted the LAN interface of the Netgear NetHawk Smart Wi Fi router. The router category is also new for us in this year's event and several entrants decided to test their skills against the ubiquitous devices. Pedro and Radek had no problems leading the way by using a stack-based buffer overflow to get a shell on the router. Their first foray into the pwned own world earned them $5,000 and half a master of pwned point. In a day full of first, the fluoroacetate duo returned for our first attempt ever in the home automation category. They chose the Amazon Echo Show 5 for their target, and with the device in an RF enclosure to ensure no outside interference, they used an integer overflow in JavaScript to compromise the unit and take control. The exploit earned them $60,000 and six master pwn points. Richard and Amat returned to the television category, this time targeting the Samsung Q60. Although their first attempt failed, their second attempt was able to use an integer overflow in JavaScript to get a reverse shell from the television. Show me what you got. This successful demonstration earned the team another $20,000 and two more master pwn points. Richard and Amat returned once more, this time targeting the first handset of the competition. They used a JavaScript bug that jumped the stack to exfiltrate a picture from the Xiaomi Mi 9. Once patched, this should prove to be an interesting write-up. They earned another $20,000 and two more master phone points for their efforts. Next, the flashback duo of Pedro Ribeiro and Radek Domanski targeted the WAN interface of the Netgear Nighthawk smart Wi-Fi router. Although their attempt took some time due to the device starting up, they were able to remotely modify the router's firmware such that their payload persisted across even a factory reset. That's pretty much the definition of persistence. They earned $20,000 and one more master pwn point for their successful demonstration. In their final attempt of the day, Pedro and Radek targeted the LAN interface of the TP-Link AC1750 smart Wi-Fi router. They used a total of three different bugs, starting with the command injection vulnerability, to get their code executed on the target. They earned themselves another $5,000 and half a master pwn point. That brings their total winnings for the first day of their first pwned own ever to $30,000. Not a bad first day. The team from F-Secure Labs, Mark Barnes, Toby Drew, Max von Amerigan, and James Lerero, were up next, also targeting the TP-Link AC1750. Although they had a successful demonstration, complete with synchronized lights on the router, the exploit used some of the same bugs as the previous contestant. It still qualified as a partial win, but no master pwn points were awarded. It was still a great demonstration, especially the Vegas lights on the router. In their final attempt for day one, Richard and Amat returned to target the Samsung Galaxy X10 versus the NFC component. They used a bug in JavaScript JIT followed by a UAF to escape the sandbox and grab a picture off the phone. All it took was a tap. Their final entry for day one earned them $30,000 and three master pwn points. That puts their day one total at $145,000. They also have a commanding lead on Master Pwn with 15 total points. In our final attempt of the day, the crew from F-Secure Labs targeted the Xiaomi Mi 9 in the web browser category. They successfully demonstrated their exploit by using a chain of two logic bugs. However, one of these was known by the vendor previously. That does make it a partial win, and they still received $20,000 and two Master Pwn points. That wraps up our first day of Pwn to Own Tokyo for 2019. We've seen some exciting research and set quite a few firsts in our contest. First television, first router, and first home automation. Tomorrow looks to be just as exciting with both baseband attempts occurring first thing in the morning. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and watch the blog for current updates. We'll see you tomorrow.